in this class let us discuss about uh, some basic properties of uh, a fluid so a fluid can be defined as a substance capable of flowing so anything which is capable of flowing can be taken as a fluid so normally liquids and gases they are treated as uh, fluids so water oil they are liquids and some ga gases also they can be treated as uh, fluids so apart from solids uh, so the other things liquids and gases they are treated as fluids because solids cannot flow they can only move from one place to another so the other property is a fluid can resist uh, shear force so that is a very important property of a fluid now i will have i will take the two examples of conveying systems fluids can be conveyed through pipes or it can be conveyed through channels so you might have seen channels in fields which carry water to irrigation lands so in the case of pipes water supply pipes or drainage pipes also it will that uh, flow will take place in the case of uh, pipes uh, flow takes place under pressure this is very important the difference in pressure between uh, two sections or two points uh, in a flow it causes the flow in the case of a pipe so the shear stress normally acts in the direction opposite the direction of flow so here i have shown here to add the shear stress that means shear stress is nothing but resistance to flow the resistance to flow takes place in the form of shear stress that too it exists at the pipe walls along the circumference of the pipe here this is the pipe let us say so along this pipe wall along the circumference of the pipe wall to exist that is a important concept in the case of pipe flow whereas the other way of uh, conveyor system is a channel system where where the flow occurs due to gravity so due to the weight of the weight of water or whatever fluid is there due to the weight of the uh, the flow occurs so here all the at all the sections it is subjected to atmospheric pressure in the case of channels flow is due to atmospheric pressure and uh, it is due to gravity whereas in the case of pipe flow uh, the flow will be due to the pressure difference that is going to exist between two sections now coming to some of the properties important properties basic properties of the fluid the first one is the specific mass which is denoted by rho the specific mass can also be called as mass density so it is nothing but uh, the mass contained mass of the fluid contained in unit volume so normally volume is expressed in the meter cube so therefore mass is expressed in kg so the unit of specific mass will be kg per meter cube so for water its value is taken as 1000 kg per meter cube because water is treated as the standard liquid now the dimensions of uh, this uh, specific mass will be now mass kg is mass m1 divided by l cube that is meter cube means length cube so m l minus 3 is the dimension of a specific mass or mass density of the fluid the second uh, important property is the specific weight it is also called as weight density denoted by gamma or in some books they use omega also so it is the ratio of weight of the fluid contained per unit volume see the difference here this is mass of the fluid contained per unit volume this is weight of the fluid contained per unit volume so weight is expressed as the si units in newtons so newton per meter cube is the unit for specific weight so what for water its value is 9810 newton per meter cube so even if the value is not given rho and uh, uh, gamma values are not given for water you should be knowing the value rho is 1000 kg per meter cube for water and gamma of water is 9810 newton per meter cube or 9.81 kN per meter cube now uh, the very important relation between gamma and mu or gamma and rho is gamma is equal to rho into g so if you see here when you multiply this 1000 by 9.81 you are going to get 9810 so where d is 9.81 meter per second square that is the acceleration due to gravity now the dynamic dimensions if you define uh, if you come to the definition of newton newton is nothing but it is like the derived like this force is equal to mass into acceleration so according to newton's second law so force is newton mass is kg and acceleration meter per second square therefore one newton is nothing but 1 kg meter per second square if you want the dimensions 
So what you have to do here is for Newton, it is kg meter per second square. Kg is ma m, uh, and uh, this uh, meter is L divided by second square means k to the power of minus two divided by meter cube means L cube. If you simplify this, you get m L minus two t minus two. So that is the dimension of uh, the specific weight. Now coming to the third one, that is specific gravity denoted by S or some books they use G also. So it is the ratio of specific weight of fluid divided by specific weight of water. So if you want to take the uh, specific gravity of any fluid, it should be mentioned with respect to water. Some of the fluids they are lighter than water, some of the fluids they are heavier than water. For example, petrol, diesel, they are all lighter than water, so their specific gravity is uh, normally 0 0.9, 0 0.85 like that, whereas specific gravity of mercury is 13.6 and it is heavier than water. In other words, specific gravity gives an idea about the weight of a particular fluid with respect to the weight of water. So for example, uh, specific gravity of uh, mercury 13.6 means 13.6 times it is heavier than water, that is the weight. So it has no units because both are both numerator and denominator are specific weights, no units, and therefore dimensions are m0, l0, t0, and uh, the relationship is can be written in another way also. So specific uh, gravity of any fluid is equal to so gamma of that uh, this is gamma m divided by gamma w. Okay. So or if you want gamma m, gamma m is equal to gamma. W multiplied by SL. That is the uh, specific uh, gravity of that particular fluid. So that means by knowing the uh, specific gravity of the fluid, you can always compute the specific weight of that particular fluid using this formula. Now come the fourth very, very important property of a fluid is the dynamic viscosity. So this uh, this property will not be there in the case of solids, whereas uh, these three above three properties you can expect in solids also. Any substance which is capable of flowing that only can exhibit uh, dynamic viscosity, it is a measure of resistance offered to flow. So, since flow occurs, well, there will be resistance like this I have shown here. This is how the resistance occurs. So, resistance is uh, developed in terms of uh, shear stresses. So, if the resistance is more, then its viscosity is more. That is the meaning. Dynamic viscosity is more. So, it is, it is expressed in Pascal second. Unit of dynamic viscosity is Pascal second. And Pascal is something called Newton per meter square second. So, if you want the dimensions of that, so Newton, you can see here, Newton is expressed in kg meter per second square, that is m l t minus 2 into second is t divided by meter square means l square. If you simplify this, you will get m l minus 1 t minus 1. So, that is the dimension of dynamic viscosity. You need not derive, you need not remember, you need not remember any dimensions of these properties. Just you should know the definition of that. If you know the definition of unit term, definitely you can derive the dimensions of those properties. Now there is one more uh, viscosity called kinematic viscosity denoted by mu. So this is mu. All these are Greek letters. Rho, gamma, this mu, nu. This is denoted by mu mu like this. Eh? This is mu. mu. So here this is def defined as kinematic viscosity of the fluid is defined as the ratio of dynamic viscosity to its mass density. Mu divided by rho is something but mu. So if you want the units, sir, see mu is expressed in Newton second per meter square divided by rho is expressed in kg per meter cube like this here. So now once again this Newton is expressed in kg meter per second square, second divided by meter square per kg per meter cube. Now if you cancel this kg and kg, one second will be cancelled, you will be left with this meter cube goes to numerator, meter power 4 divided by meter square second, so it becomes meter square per second. So meter square per second is the SI unit. So of this uh, dynamic viscosity and you can see that the dimensions becomes mid square means L square, then L square, T minus 1 because per second is there. Please note that 
all these uh, we are writing in terms of SI units, intermediate primary units, because for mass it is kg, for time it is second, for length it is meters. Please, you have to remember that. So, whatever may be the units they give, so you have to convert them to SI units and then you have to substitute in the formula. Any standard formula is there, so those formulae we have to substitute in SI units only. So, they may give in other units, millimeters, centimeters, they may give, so you have to convert to meters. Okay. Similarly, they may give in grams, you have to convert it to kgs. They may give in minutes, hours, you have to convert it to seconds. So, meter, uh, kg, and second, they are the basic uh, fundamental uh, units for length, mass, and time. Now, one important uh, conversion is there here 1 pascal second, it is a unit of dynamic viscosity, is nothing but 10 poise. So, this is another, uh, the poise is another. We are expressing uh, the unit of uh, uh, dynamic viscosity and 1 centimeter square per second is called as 1 stroke. So, meter square per second is the unit of kinematic viscosity. If the value is very, very less, uh, it can be expressed in centimeter square per second also. 1 centimeter square uh, per second is nothing but 1 stroke. In that way, if you want 1 meter square per second, it becomes uh, 10 power 4 because here you see 1 meter is 10 square centimeter square over centimeters. Therefore, 1 meter square means it is 10 square into 10 square, 10 power 4. So, this is a very important uh, conversion you should remember because in problems, they may give a new value in uh, points and new value in strokes. So, in that case, you should be in a position to convert them to SI units and then you have to substitute in the formula and get the result. Now, the next property is the surface tension, sigma, so which, which is exhibited only in fluids, not in solids. So, surface tension sigma, it is nothing but the tension force exerted at the free surface per unit length. So, usually, if, if a liquid is uh, kept in a container or a beaker, the, uh, the free surface, normally to have the equilibrium of all the particles, it exerts some pressure, uh, it, it exerts some force, the tension force along the length of that. Uh, uh, water surface, that uh, tension force is called as the surface tension force, something like this. So, you have some liquid here, maybe water, something like that. So, to have the equilibrium of these particles which are at the free surface, this is called as the free surface. Free surface means the pressure on the surface is at constant pressure. So, to have the equilibrium of these particles which are there on the free surface, there will be a tension force exerted along the length, along the length of that, uh, what we can say, surface, free surface, that uh, force is called as sigma, surface tension force. So, it is expressed as uh, the force per unit length, that is Newton per meter. Once again, Newton is kg meter per second square divided by meter, that is meter to get cancelled. So, kg per second square, that is kg is m, dimension will be m and uh, per second square meter it is T minus 2. So, M T minus 2 is the dimension of surface tension. One more important property of fluid which is not there in solids is the capillarity. Capillarity. So, here in this capillarity it is divided by H, small h. It is the phenomenon of rise or fall of liquid surface with respect to adjacent level. So, for example, if you have a container something like beaker and if you insert a thin tube so, this tube is called as capillary tube, capillary tube. So, a very simple example is uh, in plants, you have those, uh, the water is drawn through small tubes from the, uh, through the roots from the soil. So, that is an example for this. So, here it is a small uh, tube, what happens, the tendency of this liquid is to enter that tube and to uh, attain a position in the tube. Sometimes that uh, level of the liquid uh, may be above the adjacent. This is the adjacent level, adjacent uh, level in the container. It may go above that or it may come down. So, this also once again depends on the type of the uh, fluid or the liquid. So, in the case of water, we can see capillary rise. If the, uh, if, if the level is above the adjacent level, it is capillary rise. If the level is below the, below the uh, that uh, this level, then it is capillary form or capillary depression, it is also called a depression. So, it is normally expressed in terms of centimeters or millimeters or meters. 
and its dimension is L. So only length dimension. So next, uh, another property is specific volume. Specific volume is nothing but the reciprocal of uh, specific mass or specific weight. In the case of uh, liquids, sir, we take it as a reciprocal of uh, that specific weight. That means one by one by gamma. In the case of liquids, in the case of gases, it is one by rho. So that's all the difference. So it is the volume contained per unit weight. In the case of liquids, meter cube per newton. In the case of gases, it is volume contained per unit mass. That is meter cube per kg. And the dimensions will be. <coughs> in the reverse of this, for example, in the case of uh, uh, liquids, sir. Uh, so the dimension will be for uh, specific weight it is m n minus two t minus two. Here what happens? The reciprocal of that we have to take. So if it is plus in the power, you have to take minus. If it is minus here, then you have to take it as plus. That means for the liquids it is uh, instead of m m minus one will come l minus two becomes l two t minus two becomes t two because it is reciprocal. Similarly for gases. So it is a reciprocal of rho, one by rho. So here it is m l minus three. Therefore, there it becomes m l minus one l cube. So this is the dimension of specific volume. So these are the some important uh, uh, properties. Of course, one more property is there called compressibility. I will take up in the next class. So these are the some basic uh, uh, fluid properties uh, that are observed only. Some of them they are observed only in fluids. Uh, some of them you can expect in solids also. Particularly viscosity, surface tension, capillarity. So these things are observed in liquids. Any substance which is capable of flowing is called as liquid. So next class I will discuss about compressible and incompressible liquid fluids, real and ideal fluids, and there is one important uh, uh, the law called uh, Newton's law of viscosity and uh, Later on, I will take up some numerical examples also.